Hi, in this video we will be setting up character cloth in Cloth version 5. First of all, my apologies for the programmer art. The shirt has pegs, basically because I extruded it from the character's body mesh. But as you can see, the simulation is looking really nice. If I disable the OB skin cloth component, the simulation will get turned off and the cloth will fit to the character body. If I enable it back again, uh, you will see that it reacts realistically to the body movement, to gravity, and it's looking really good overall. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, here I have my character. Uh, the shirt mesh is a separate mesh from the body, just for the sake of demonstration. Uh, if it was part of the same mesh, the setup would be basically the same. Uh, this character also has some pants, which are part of the of the body mesh and that we will set up in a following video so that you can see uh, the differences between both setups but for now let's uh, focus on the on the shirt so this character um, has an animator the shirt has been skinned uh, to the same bone structure of the as the as the body so if i take say this joint here and i bend him over uh, you can see that the shirt follows the same exact movements as the as the body this is necessary for for cloth that will be very very close to the character body at all times like a shirt or shorts or that kind of stuff uh, later on you will see why so for now let's do the the basic stuff uh, we need to create a blueprint for the shirt so i will go ahead create OB and since this is a skinned mesh because it's a character we need to use a skinned cloth blueprint instead of a regular cloth blueprint so let's call it shirt and then select the shirt mesh as input click generate okay nothing new here uh, if we go to edit mode we will see that uh, particles have been generated and all is well for now just go back to the main scene and now let's do the, the component setup for the character first thing we will need is to select the character's root and add an ob solver and an ob late fixed updater the reason why we are using a late fixed updater instead of a fixed updater is because we will need to have the animator running in animate physics which will update the animation uh, just before the physics kicks in in each frame because uh, for every frame we need the animation happening first then the simulation okay uh, if we don't do that if we don't set the update mode to nor to animate physics we leave it in normal or if we use a fixed updater instead of a late fixed updater uh, then the order will be switched and we will have simulation first and then the animation and if we perform the simulation for the shirt and then we move the bones of the arms for instance then arms will poke out of the of the shirt and we will see all sorts of clipping because basically the the animation is one frame ahead of the simulation every frame so to have the correct order we need to have a late fixed updater and set this here to animate physics okay now i'm going to assign the solver to the late fixed updater don't forget this step and we are done here at the character's root now we need to select the shirt mesh and then add a OB skinned cloth component not a regular OB cloth but a skinned cloth and then a OB skinned cloth renderer not a regular OB cloth renderer but a skinned cloth renderer okay uh, all that's left to do is to drag the shirt blueprint into the blueprint slot here now I'm going to add a material to the shirt so that we can see clearly the shirt and distinguish it from the character's body. So I'm going to use 
this material and for the back sides it's where I'm going to see much of them but anyway I'm going to use this other material which is a back faces material and we should not now be able to click play and get some simulation happening okay so something happened definitely uh, what has happened here is that the glove has just fallen a little bit through the shoulders and the chest areas so we are getting clipping but not that's not a big deal we will we will fix it later uh, if we try to move the character around we won't see anything happening and this is because simulation happens in the solver's local space so if we want to to have some of the world space movement that we are applying here transferred to the cloth we need to increase the solver's world linear inertia scale like that let's crank it up all the way to one and also if we want to to have rotations affecting the cloth this kind of thing uh, we need to increase the world angular inertia scale I'm going to leave it at 3 or 6 and as you can see if I rotate the character now we have some pretty nice simulation going on same if I move the character around okay but there's a lot of clipping and that's because uh, we have some of the blueprint parameters uh, wrong we need to go to the cloth blueprint and paint a little bit over the, the cloth to fix all this clipping that's happening so I'm going to select the blueprint enter blueprint edit mode and now we will talk a little bit about uh, all the skin constraint parameters here so skin constraints basically um, make each particle uh, stay very close to its uh, animated position so that vertices don't get uh, too far away from the from the character so for instance if the character were to perform a somersault animation or something like that if you relied purely on collision detection between the shirt mess and the character's body that would probably make the, the, the shirt go away or fall to the floor or clip through the character arms and you would just it would be very 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 uh, very bad for us that's because the sheer precision needed to keep a cloth on top of the body using collisions only is very very high so since we want real-time animation and not uh, wait for maybe a minute or two for each simulation frame we need to use skin constraints um, I'm going to show you the parameters that we can change for each vector the first one is the skin backstop the skin backstop uh, defines how far from the from the initial surface of the cloth can the vertices go the default is zero uh, if I use a higher value sorry better if I select the particle first if I use a positive value you will see that particles are now allowed to enter the mesh in the direction opposite to the normal if I use a negative value you would see that the particles will be forced to be kept away a little bit outwards from the from the normal direction of the of the mesh uh, this is what we want in this case because we are having a lot of clipping so if we force the shirt to separate a little bit from the body it will probably improve things quite a bit okay so the next value we have is the skin backstop radius the backstop radius is basically uh, the radius of an invisible sphere that's placed behind each particle in the in the body uh, why do we have this okay so we talked about uh, not having collision detection before and if we don't have any collision detection going on it means that we we would have to, the shirt just ignore the body and go inside of it so how do we prevent this from happening 
uh, here's why, why we have the backstop uh, spheres. The backstop spheres are basically a very big invisible sphere behind each vertex. Uh, and that prevents the vertex from going inside of the body. Each vertex has its own backstop sphere, so it doesn't have to calculate uh, if it's mm, closer to another vertex backstop, backstop sphere or anything, anything like that. Uh, this helps a lot with performance because each vertex knows, it, knows exactly where its backstop sphere is and what radius it has, etc. Uh, in this case, we can see that the, the center of the sphere is at, at the end of the, of the red lines here and the radius is quite big. So I would say that this is, this is enough for us. The next parameter is the skin radius. This is arguably the most important skin parameter because it tells each particle how far it can get uh, while being simulated from the skin position. So this lets you uh, smoothly interpolate between animation and simulation. If you set the skin radius to zero, like that, you would have pure animation because particles would, wouldn't be allowed to move at all from their animation, their animated positions. If we set this very large, like this, you would have basically pure simulation going on. Uh, but that would probably look a little bit mm, weird because particles will be able to get very far away from the from their animated position and during very quick animations like a somersault of some sudden change of direction in the character's locomotion uh, you would have particles straying away from the from the body so let's keep it a little lower like something like that okay uh, the next parameter we have is, is the skin compliance compliance as we talked uh, in, an, in a previous video is the inverse of stiffness so if we have a compliance of zero it would mean that as soon as a particle gets outside of the skin radius it would be immediately projected inside no no elasticity in that movement uh, and as soon as it gets inside the backstop sphere, it would be immediately projected outside. So this is what we want most of the time. It can be increased for soft body-like effects, but for now we will leave it to zero for all particles. Okay, let's see how this looks. I'm going to get back to the scene and hit play. Okay, so we got rid of a lot of the clipping, but we have some more clipping here around the shoulders uh, we might be able to get rid of it by in decreasing a little bit the skin radius so that particles are forced to to be kept mm, closer to their original position here uh, so let's go ahead do that and see what happens to do that i am going to go to painting mode of the blueprint editor and I'm going to change the render mode to mesh so that I can actually see the the mesh with the with the values shown in the color gradient and now I'm going to select skin radius and begin painting a smaller radius here around the shoulders I'm going to reduce the, the brush opacity a little bit and then paint here if you feel that the transition between the the low radius zone and the high radius zone is too too abrupt you can use the smoothing tool a little bit so the transition is smoother like that and let's see the results now
okay we are getting closer now we have a little bit of clipping here over the the arms so what I'm going to do is select property painting mode again and go to skin radius and maybe reduce the radius a little bit here however chances are that the particles are getting around their backstop particles uh, sorry their backstop spheres so what I'm going to do instead is increase the skin backstop radius a bit here in the arms so let's use 1.5 <coughs> And increase it here and in the other arm too and now let's see the result okay so that was it we fixed the issues we had if I now take the character and move it around a little bit you will see that the simulation is looking pretty good we still have some clipping in different areas however for the character we saw at the beginning of the video i spent a significant amount of time painting property values under the arms and around the waist near the chest to get rid of all the clipping uh, if you mm, don't want to go th through this lengthy process what you can do is mm, get rid of the of the faces of the character body uh, right under the shirt this way you have a win-win situation because you can get rid of faces that won't be seen in the game and you also get rid of all the clipping very easily okay so now let's apply an animation controller to the character I'm going to remove the apply root motion option so that the character stays in place and then I'm going to use this very simple controller which only has one animation, which is a running animation and then click play and see the results okay, so it doesn't look very bad obviously we have still some clipping behind the arms near the back and in the armpits uh, but as I told you earlier, this is very very easily uh, solved by getting rid of the character's body inside of the inside of the shirt or by basically uh, spending a lot of time painting values so that you get it just right uh, let's see what we can do to improve performance here I can go to the solver and we can basically disable all the constraints we are not using in this example we are only using distance, bending constraints and skin constraints which are the important ones here so I'm going to remove friction, collision, particle friction, particle collision volume, shape matching, tethers, uh, pin, stitch, density, stretch and bend um, if I click play now you would see that nothing has changed um, I could also go a little bit further and change the distance constraints from sequential to parallel and reduce the amount of iterations to 2 and reduce the amount of bending constraint iterations to only 1 because we don't really need that quality from for the bending constraints and that's pretty much it I could reduce gravity a little bit maybe to minus 6 make the cloth a little bit floatier and then increase damping a little bit okay and that's looking really really good so that's pretty much it for this tutorial uh, in the next video we'll be setting up the character pants so make sure you watch it see you in the next video